Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So today I want to showcase my Bard DPS build. This is for Endgame for Module 26, but I shall cover lots of alternatives you can use in terms of gear that may be much more accessible to you. You can skip to any section you're most interested in via the timestamps on the play bar below. Now in order to make Bard DPS really work, at least competitively, you have to take advantage of a lot of um, features, things that ordinarily shouldn't be as effective as they are, but in the current state of the game, they are how they are, and our best bet to deal a lot of damage is taking advantage of them. We'll discuss them in this build. I've run through Bard DPS in the new dungeon, the master version, and it went quite well. You do have quite a lot of control abilities along with the dungeon itself being a lot more friendly to melee damage dealers versus some other content. You shouldn't have any trouble here as long as you have a decent setup. So first of all, just a quick showcase of what you can get with this build. This is about it here. You can see what we currently miss with regards to our stats and you can see what then we will have. You'll end up with that 90% power due to the raptors and then like a mystic aura or even a runic aura. You'll end up with that over 71% accuracy. Combat advantage, really close to the cap there. Same with crit strike, crit severity, we got that nicely to the cap. And our maximum self damage buffs. So this is excluding any buffs that our party might give us. Just using our powers and our setup is nearly 90%. So that's actually pretty high. So before we go to powers, we're going to talk about our mechanics as the song blade. First of all, you have the shift ability. So when somebody's going to attack you, you can roll to avoid that hit. Just be aware the roll is not as far as, let's say, on a rogue, but otherwise it's very similar. You'll use it to immunity frame damage and get out of the red zone quickly. Then you have your perform mode, which is unique. Here, you're going to be able to play certain songs. Now, what you ideally want to do is have with these songs, have them like pinned here. That way you can see what you have to actually press in order to cast that song. And that way, when you do cast those series of notes, you will cast that song, gaining those effects. And each song has its unique benefits. In general, you will want to have a song like Tailwind Mambo active all the time. It lasts a whopping 72 seconds. So you will go into your perform and cast it. Now what you can do is have key binds or quick play slots that allow you to cast this song without having to type out every single note. Like I could have this move to the quick play slot here. And when I go into that perform mode, I can cast it here using that button. So for me, it's Q. But I do recommend you learn to manually play the song or just maybe use the keybinds on consoles you will have to learn because you gain an extra 10% damage bonus by doing so along with boosting your team. However, quick play has another benefit. It allows you to instantly play the song without getting a delay. If I'm here in combat and I go and cast Ballad of the Witch, I can immediately start attacking versus if I cast what's not in quick play ballad of the hero we go and use like the keybind method right here you can see we get this must wait longer after playing a song that gets infuriating and it's not really good in aoe so you just use your ballad of the witch on quick play and that's what i do but ultimately you'll want to have again like in combat have that tailwind mambo active you can cast it outside of combat that's fine and then when you go in combat if you're in single target cast the ballad of the hero and attack and when you're able to cast ballad of the hero again you do so ballad of the hero lasts 20 seconds and before 20 seconds is over you want to cast the finale which is the 800 magnitude hit that's like anvil from your fighter you cast it like this and then we can go into perform again, cast Ballad of the Hero, and continually go back attacking. You can put Ballad of the Hero on quick play to avoid the please wait, but you will not gain the extra like 10% damage bonus. And I personally prefer to have it on quick play, especially when using this headpiece, when you will be casting Ballad of the Hero every like 15 seconds or so, and then not have to have that, yeah, like, 
three second window of sitting there on please wait. Even when you cast it manually, you're still gonna be freaking stuck. But ultimately, let's move on to our powers. First of all, our at wills. We're generally going to use staccato in single target to attack our enemy all the time. Our secondary will be our con elemento. It will depend on which elemental song you have cast. One of the three, Blaze Flamenco, Tailwind Mambo, or Steel March. Each gives it a unique effect. If you are really tryharding, you can go for three stacks of this. So you would cast your like Blaze Flamenco, cast the Con Huko, gives you one elemental stack, then you go cast your Steel March, and then your Con Brio gives you another elemental stack, and then cast your Tailwind, and then your Con Motto, and then you have three elemental melody stacks. You can do that when you're fighting ads before you go to your boss, or you can do it during the trial at certain phasings. It's up to you, but most of the time you can just forget about it and just get one elemental melody stack through your Tailwind Mambo and just forget about the rest. Just make sure you're casting that con motto as soon as your elemental melody expires. If you don't see that green swirl icon, go and cast your at will. Unfortunately, it will not refresh when you cast it again, even if you, let's say, play a different song and cast a different version of the at will. And then when you are in AoE fights, when you're attacking multiple enemies, I recommend to just have casted the Tailwind Mambo and you can use the Con Motto there to hit them from a distance in an AoE whirlwind attack. Then we go to our encounter powers and these are the three you would use in single target. Your Lunge, Dancing Lights and Ad Libitum. Dancing Lights recently got fixed with the performer feat so that the improvised versions actually properly deal damage. Just be aware of the performer feat giving you improvised versions and to actually make use of them. When you go to AoE fights, I recommend switching Dancing Lights over to Duet and Ad Libitum over to Vault Stubito. This will give you a good bit more AoE damage. You want to jump cast usually Vault Stubito. So you jump and cast it. That way you don't move anywhere. And then with Duet, you ideally want to follow it up with like a lunge so it doesn't like reposition you. You can see when you don't jump cast Vault Stubito, you just, you, you go lunging forward like this and it can like put you off. It can put you in a bunch of enemies in a wrong position for combat advantage, etc., etc. And for your daily powers in AoE, you're generally using Inspiration. For single target, generally Lore. And then you have your Encore. When you do get to 30 of these playing to the audience stacks, of which you gain one stack every time you use an improvised version of an encounter power, you will gain Grand Stand Encore, which as you can read through here, doubles the amount of damage by the song you play with Encore. So the way Encore works is it plays the song which you have previously cast whenever you use that but it uses your action points rather than performance. So you can use it to cast Ballad of the Hero again. Like if I cast Ballad of the Hero, I now have Encore Ballad of the Hero. And right now I have the special one, which is the Grand Stand. And yes, you ideally always want to save that Grand Stand effect for Encore Ballad of the Hero. Don't end up using that on like Tailwind, as you'll see if I use Tailwind, now Encore becomes Grand Stand of the winds which is a bit of a waste because with the ballad of the hero one you'll end up dealing 200 damage per hit instead of 100. We've discussed about the songs already but ultimately on this build you want to have tailwind mambo active all the time followed with ballad of the hero in single target and ballad of the witch in aoe. For your class features here you want mystifying strikes and masterful performer. If you are running Masterful Performer, cast Tailwind Mambo manually. So you can go, you can pin it here, and then when you enter Perform, you can see which keys you actually need to press. Personally, I have not learned these, but it's fairly straightforward once you do so. For the feats, you generally just want to go with these. The first one here will support the tank, giving him some extra threat. Again, when you play a song manually, Elemental Melody, as we said, Ballad of Color Voice. Now, 
between the two, it depends. If you're going to be playing Ballad of the Hero manually, then Ballad Call of Voice. If you're not, and it can be easier to just not bother with it and just use Ballad of the Hero in quick play, also because you avoid this annoying ass please wait, but it will not be counted as playing it manually, so you will miss out on providing the team a 5% buff here, and you'll miss out on your own 10% damage buff here. But if you use a do, you will give somebody nearby a 10% buff to their damage, damage resistance, and outgoing healing. Very nice. You can pair that with inspiration, and during an artifact call, you can give somebody a freaking 25% damage bonus. Pretty insane. So I personally play just with a do because I'm lazy and I do not like dealing with the please wait from playing Ballad of the Hero manually. So then we go to our fourth set of feet. And here we take Redouble Mint just because it makes our life a lot easier. You don't have to worry about like always casting ad libitum. You can switch between using all your different encounter powers one after the other and it doesn't really matter. And ultimately Performer. Yeah, when you're in combat there attacking, you can receive improvised versions of your attacks, which just allows you to use the encounter power again. Just be careful with ad libitum. If you mash it too hard, you can end up with a ghost encounter power that allows you to keep mashing the button. It plays the animation of it if you're casting it, but it won't deal any damage until it's off cooldown and it won't show you that cooldown. So now we move to our rotation and for AoE, it's pretty simple. Just make sure you have your Tailwind Mambo active, have Ballad of the Witch in quick play. And as soon as you enter the fight, you want to be mashing tab and mashing that quick play slot and then you want to be casting your air counter powers you can jump cast your vaults to Beto as soon as you have combat advantage on your target and then just using the at will of the con motto there just dancing around your enemies and using your encounter powers again there and you can either let them move you or not depending on your desire your daily power you'll use just inspiration and your mount power you'll use whenever it suits best along with your artifact depending on what you're using getting your daily power back for aoe is not so important so you may as well use a damaging power artifact like the dragon bone blades then for your single target rotation, you want to make sure again to have Tailwind Mambo active. You can play around with trying to get elemental stacks if you wish. Generally just getting one is okay and that's what I go with. So as soon as you do enter your fight, make sure to cast that con motto, give you the elemental stack, make sure you have combat advantage. And then you're probably going to go for an artifact call. And if you are, make sure you have Ballad of the Hero active, then you're going to go with your artifact. Use your daily power, whether that's inspiration or lore, and then you're casting your encounter powers like dragon fire, mount power at like 55 on the cooldown, and just before it's over, cast the end of your Ballad of the Hero and cast Ballad of the Hero again. With the Dark Maiden's headpiece, you will get an insane amount of performance, allowing you to, yes, pretty much cast Ballad of the Hero every 12 seconds. It's pretty crazy. And so try and squeeze in that last hit of Ballad of the Hero that's 800 magnitude towards the end of the artifact call. But yeah, if you don't have this headpiece and are using an alternative like the Bregan one or something, because you got to do Master Temple Spider for this, a lot of it, then just let Battle of the Hero play through and just make the most of it and only use the finale when Battle of the Hero is about to expire. And otherwise, if you do experience having no encounter powers at all during the artifact call, you are just spamming staccato to get as much mystify procs as you can mystify will result in uh, depending on the fight on this build upwards of 15 percent of your damage but the main source is actually going to be your mirage weapons so what you want to do is always make sure and align the mirage weapons with the artifact call that is really crucial the cooldown on it is 30 seconds so just before you cast an encounter power when you enter a fight cast dragon fire then you'll cast the encounter power and your clones will appear and as soon as your dragon fire is off cooldown or your hawk or your doohickey then you know the next encounter power you use will summon the clones so try and align it with the artifact call that you're always getting the clones for the next artifact call. If people need to delay the artifact call, 
then delay casting encounter powers. It can be well worth it. Just have a look at an example damage log of a bard. Yeah, flesh, which is the mirage weapons, is like 30% of your damage. Followed by Mystify, which can be upwards of 15% of your damage. Even more, it can be upwards to like 30% of your damage in a trial. And then followed by your encounter powers, your at will, your mount power, ballad of the hero, and yeah, a few other things. But right now, you're taking massive advantage of Mirage. Without Mirage working the way it does in high item level content, your damage is seriously going to fall behind compared to any other class. It's quite ridiculous, the current state of Bard Songblade. And so the only real way to make it work in said dungeons is yes, using the Mirage weapons. Without them, you can still do decent damage, but it will be about 20% less. So we move to our stats and your damage dealer. So you want to focus on these first five stats here. Power, then combat advantage, then crit severity, then crit strike, and then accuracy. Be aware to not miss out on damage sources when they're about equal to the amount of stats you could otherwise obtain. Like this armor piece here, your Minsk, your Batiri, your Knight, 8% against Drown Spiders when running the new dungeon. And again, on this build, you will get your power to 90% accuracy to 71%, combat advantage pretty much to 90%, same with crit strike, crit severity to 90%, with up to the maximum of damage buffs of, yeah, 88%. And you will require to have all these other party buffs though as well. Most endgame parties run Raptors, so you get the power. Most of them run Mystic Aura, Runic Aura, you'll get the power there, and also an accuracy buff if it's Mystic. A Portobello for the combat advantage, Tutor for the combat advantage, Spider Totem, that's a belt item for the combat advantage, and you'll get like 2% crit strike from the Paladin Aura or Healer running the new armor. Now I'm aware that not all groups will run like Portobello, most will run Tutor, but if you don't have Portobello and you don't have the Spider Totem because you didn't bother farm so much with the Temple of the Spider, I would recommend switching your Neverwinter Knight over to like Combat Advantage, so that's like the cheaper alternative is Staldorf or then the Golden Cat. And that way you'll maintain that level of combat advantage. But at the point of damage buffs still not being as high as above 90%, it can be worth it to take the lower value. So it can still be better off to have the knight, even though you're under capped on combat advantage. Especially when not running against drowned spiders, you'll switch the shard over to combat advantage and that way you'll gain that extra boost there and become near enough to the cap. I personally have Portobello, so when I do run my bard, I run Portobello. So now we moved on to our gear and what alternatives you can use to what I have. Now the headpiece here, you get from Master Temple of the Spider with the North Dark Witches campaign. You can upgrade it further with the Men's of Branson campaign and I would recommend it. Currently, it gives an insane amount of regeneration to your performance, far more than it realistically should and that's why we use it. If it ever gets fixed we'd switch that over to like accuracy or damage in underdark or switch other things in our build and take the crit strike. Those are a bunch of alternatives there and the Bregan one right here comes from Menza Branzen and so you should easily be able to obtain it just by farming the campaign zone. The armor here we use it actually primarily to buff the damage from our Mirage clones. This damage does affect them a lot of sources do not. However, an easy switch is to the Enchanted Bregan one, which is a debuff, which reduces the enemy's stats, which causes you and your entire team to deal extra damage. If you don't actually have anybody running this in the group, you would gain a little bit more damage through this than running the Dark Maidens one. And on top of that, your clones also gain the damage boost from these. And especially when moving out of Underdark content, this will become the best slot to use there. But again, alternatively, the Mighty Chorus if you miss those combat advantage stats as well. For the arms, we want these healing mitts from the Master Demon web pits. But alternative to those is like the Superior Crushers, but you probably would want the Mighty Van Bracers or the Tactful Gloves depending on the content from Dragon Hunts here. For the weapons, absolutely Mirage. 
if they ever get fixed, then we will undoubtedly go to the perfect weapons. For the boots, you want these ones, again, from the Master Demon Web Pits. But alternatives to them is the Wasteland Wanderers, or you could viably use the Bregan ones here with the Crypt Severity. You'll just have to adjust some things and potentially not use, let's say, Flask of Potency or maybe not Squash Soup. For our neck and waist piece, we have the Shroomwood set. You'll get this from the auction house, unless you have Master Crafting, which you would have spent 30 million to unlock. It's actually one of the cheaper sets of any of the new Masterwork sets, and it gives us the strength ability scores there, along with the set bonus of accuracy and recharge speed helps out quite a bit. An alternative to that is the Dragon Hunt sets. You could go and take the White Dragon Mark set that would give the crit strike or the Red Dragon one with the combat advantage. For the rings, we've got Loth Aberrants and we've got Soothsayer's Absolution Ring. The first one here comes from your Xemnid Reliquary Master and the Soothsayer one just from Dragon Hunts. If you don't have Aberrants, which most of you probably won't, then Illustrate Beauty. And if you don't have that one and you're still working towards getting rings, then you might just want to get the Mighty Ring of Clarity here with the damage bonus. It will also affect the Mirror Sweat clones. And then our shirt and trousers, when you're against Drow and Spiders, absolutely you want the damage against them. You can get this one from the Auction House or Menzer Brands and Heroics. And alternatively, you would run the Corroded shirt here from Dragon Ball Veil vale Mini Bosses or from the Auction House. And then your pants from your Heroic Encounters in Narbondolin, the New Zone or the Auction House. And that's it for the gear. We move on to the modifications. And here we have an accuracy, accuracy, accuracy and finally crit strike and then we just have combat advantage in all of these that's the armor kits and the jewels don't miss out on those added stats we move then to our enchantments and this is generally what we use only really matters in offense two citrines two amethysts defense doesn't matter utility garnet for our overloads, we have a Rage of Flames, but when you're running civic content, you may very well want to run like a Demon Slayer. You can get these ones here. You can get the ones from your Stronghold or Drow Slayers here from North Dark Reaches. And then just Devil's Precision for the stats. We have a Mythic Lightning Flash for the combat enchantment. And then the bonus one, we have Recharge Speed. Then for our artifacts, we just have these three as secondaries. They have a ton of item level. Alternatives to them is like the dragon bone blades, the tentacle rod, the assassin's dice, a little bit lower item level, but some good stats there. And then the Mithilar as a primary, just to apply that debuff for the artifact call, increase our party's damage. However, if you're serious about end game, I'd recommend to have at least these top 10 here, have a good selection of those. That way you can fit better into any group and you can help with the artifact calls. So then we move to our race and ability scores. And on this build, we're running Wood Elf. That gives us the additional crit strike. Alternative is anything that's gonna give you bonus of these five offensive stats. You can usually make it fit. For the ability scores, we just have strength and dexterity. If you have more than enough crit severity, switch dexterity over to charisma. Then we move to our companions. And our summoned companion will change on the content, but most of the time, just take a single target damage companion. And you could very well just run the Batiri. You need to have the Batiri here for the damage bonus against bosses anyway, so using him as summoned, he does decent damage you won't lose out on much at all. Alternatives is like the pseudo dragon for single target or assassin. And for AOE damage, you could run the Shatterkai Witch or the Minotaur Mercenary or even your Mystic Fiora you got when leveling up. Otherwise, you can run a support companion to buff your team like Portobello, Tutor, Spine Devil, etc. For our companion equipment, we're running this stuff right here with the accuracy and crit severity. You'll generally get that by doing your Scale Blight Summit adventure right here. You'll get a choice pack. Alternatively, you can do the Master Crown of Keldegon and get that stuff. Or you can get upgrades from the North Dark Reaches in the store just here. You could get Accuracy and Combat Advantage and then switch one enchantment from Combat Advantage over to critical severity. Then for our enhancement here, we have acute senses. If 
we want to run a support one, like one of these top four to increase our team's damage, then we would switch the knight over to something with combat advantage, the golden cat or Staldorf, and then we can switch acute senses over to like armor break, dulled senses, etc. But then we have Minsk for the damage bonus, Raptor for the power, Neverwinter Knight for the damage bonus, Batiri for the damage, and the Alchemist for the stats. Now, if you are running AoE content, Minsk becomes questionable, and I would run the Phase Spider instead, and Batiri becomes not so good, and I would run Crit instead, the Black, the Black Dragon Iron Stone, or Gromp from the new Battle Pass here. But if you have enough crit, then you may very well want to switch to even more combat advantage here. So then we move to our mounts. And in our current tab here, we use a combat power for single target that is based off strength. So we'd have Big B's Crushing Hand. Now an alternative right now that is bugged that does more damage than I think it's intended is the Wicked Lich. Again, I personally wouldn't go out of your way to buy it unless you got lots of spare ash from diamonds because this could get fixed any day. But for AoE damage, I recommend the Pegasus or the legendary flying carpet, the vortex to group up enemies. For our equip power, we have pack tactics. If somebody's already running pack tactics, I would recommend ferocity. For our stable, this is the current setup we have. Bunch of four slot mounts here, and the insignia bonuses are a bit of a mess. We have two menders covenant, which is not really ideal. We don't really need those ratings anyway, and an executioner's covenant. It's just the uni the unicorn doesn't really have any great insignia bonuses here, so it's whatever. Demon Wings has Warlord Inspiration, with then the deadly drider form with protector's camaraderie. When our companion attacks, we gain crit severity and defense. And these ones just reduce our defense stats and give us some more offense stats. For the insignias themselves, you can see just a bunch of brutality and skill and like one dominance here and the rest are brutality and skill. For the colors, you may just want the encounter power damage one and the crit severity. I would take the movement speed and I would take the stamina regen instead of outgoing healing, unless you actually want to play as a healer, then outgoing healing. And then raw astral diamonds. Then we move to our boons. And here you just want to take all the offensive one in these two columns, the movement speed, the damage against demons, at least for this module, you probably want to take damage against the other types as well, depending on what we'll run into. Lingering medicine's pretty good there as well. Forte and some recharge speed and then bloodlust with the guild giving us some power to revive sickness and defense. Then we move to our consumables and what I regularly use is Flask of Potency, Squash Soup, Sun Lord's Gift Elixir, Ratatouille and an Invocation Blessing usually to give me the gift of vitality for the extra accuracy. For our belt item we have a Stone of Health, the Dragonfire and the Forger's Box. Again you could have the Spider Totem like I would recommend in this setup right here. If you don't have the Spider Totem and you don't have Portobello, you can be better off to switch your Knight over to like Staldorf to give you that combat advantage back. But again, you could also just not run the damage against Drow Shirt when you're not running that content and gain some combat advantage through that shirt here, which again you get from the Auction House or Dragon Ball and Veil mini bosses. So that sums up the entirety of my Bard DPS video. How to play it and how to build it and what I use. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Massive thank you again to all these channel members for their added support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.